your gospel here on Gospel for Grantia. Your gospel is all about making sure that wherever you come from, you'll be able to hear the gospel. This is your gospel in Kirundi. Kuguru kundo imana yakunze abari muisibose. Alicho chatu mye itanga umana wai wikinege. Kugirango umizira wese. Nazo feruvi aliko aronke uvozima budashira. Yohana igize chagata tu umurungu wachubi nagata andatu. Your gospel aims to make the gospel available in languages from around the world. It's taken from John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Look out for more from your gospel at the top of the hour every hour on Gospel for Grampian. Listen. G4G.org.uk If you'd like to catch up with our podcasts, then it's podcast dot g4g dot org dot uk thank you for listening Hi, my name is tom from fraser baptist church you're tuned into gospel for grampian gospel community radio for communities around scotland living life to the film tune in on itunes tune in radio and on your mobile a very good afternoon to you. Welcome along to this Community Elements show on this Friday and the sky is blue, the sun is shining and yes it is a tad on the windy side here in Aberdeen. But what is the Community Elements all about? Well, we cover various news stories which we covered in Brian's Good News and we also We'll be making features perhaps out of some of those news stories and also about some of the other things that we have previously featured. If you would like to have a little look at our podcast site available from our website podcast.g4g.org.uk you'll see a wide range of different podcasts relating back through time almost uh, well certainly back for the last few years anyway when we started podcasting. Now, one of the things that we do is uh, to feature Brian's good news. Brian is uh, one of our volunteers. He's very faithful. He comes in and he records uh, a series of good news that he gets quite often from the Evening Express newspaper here in Aberdeen, but also from other sources as well. In one of Brian's stories today, he features a mum and the mum has gone through cancer and uh, also her gran went through cancer as well and the family have really been blessed and really supported by the wonderful work of uh, Macmillan and Macmillan nurses. So we will be featuring Macmillan a little bit later on in the programme as well. So we're going to be playing Brian's Good News and the other things that we're going to be featuring in our programme today is the subject of transport. We often give little enough thought to those who deliver our products. I mean, just today, uh, this very day, I had uh, I've been looking and seeing whether we could improve the recordings that we do here at Gospel for Grampian. So invested in a rather nice microphone that actually uh, can be set up to record different things. So, of course... We get it from online and we rely on lorry drivers. Now, these lorry drivers, these courier drivers, they're going from place to place, housing estate to housing estate, travelling up and down the roads. The road conditions are not very nice and they spend large amounts of time on the road. They listen to various things, but oftentimes they are often forgotten about and there are organisations out there who demonstrate uh, real love toward lorry drivers and uh, some of these are on glory road uh, ministries and they're based down in the gloucester area but they cover the entire area of the uk and i know that they love to do far more so we'll tell you a little bit about them in just a minute or uh, just a moment right first of all let's go on with brian's good news
A very good afternoon to you. This is Gospel for Grampian. Uh, it's the Community Elements Show, and for Brian's good news today, we've come through to Cafe for a Credo, and we're here in John Street in Aberdeen. In fact, one of Brian's favourite places. It is indeed, because you get such very good service here, and, and it's pleasant as well. It's pleasant, lots of banter, lots of cheek, and that makes it all, really. Oh, indeed, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get started, and uh, for those who are not Scottish listeners, you may well have heard about this export from Scotland, or Willie. Oh, yes, <laughs> the first article. Pupils at a North East school are urging the community to get involved in a fundraising project. Youngsters at Hillside Primary in Port Lytton are taking part in Oor Woolley's Big Bucket Trail to raise money for charities, including the Archie Foundation, which aims to improve children's health care across Grampian. Schools across the area are decorating miniature versions of the full-size sculpture, which will be placed around the area. Five hillside pupils have been appointed guardians of the sculpture and they have been tasked with uh, getting as many community groups involved in decorating and naming it as possible. Primary 7 class teacher Fiona Lindsay said, The community at Hillside is very important to us and we want that community spirit to be instilled in the pupils. We have so many different nationalities in the school and 21 different languages, so having that sense of community is really important. We want that diversity to be reflected in the Oorwilly statue. Every child in the school will put some kind of mark on the sculpture because we want it to be a reflection of everybody. It's such an important thing for bringing the school together as well as giving the children a purpose. The kids are going to be going out into the community and getting everyone involved. There's going to be a lot of problem solving involved, lots of artwork too. It's going to be a lot of fun. Each class at the school will submit two potential names, which will then be whittled down to a short list of five. That will then be put to the public vote for the final call on what the statue will be called. Luke Humphreys, who is 11, announced the project at an assembly in front of the whole primary. Luke said they were all very impressed. I hope when it's finished we put it at the entrance so everyone can see it. Fellow pupil Emily Thompson added, I'm really excited to take part because it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see the designs. The North East School has been recognised for its commitment to the environment just 18 months after opening its doors to pupils. Orchard Bray School in Aberdeen has been awarded the Green Flag Award by Eco Schools Scotland, part of Keep Scotland Beautiful. In a letter to the school alerting them to the accolade, the organisation described the flag as an outstanding achievement, saying the application was truly fantastic and a pleasure to read. Students and staff at the school grew and harvested their own food, measured and reduced the level of food waste and opened a school boutique. Plans are also in the pipeline for the pupils to come up with their own school cookbook. Orchard Bray opened in August 2017 and supports children with additional support needs from across Aberdeen. Pupils led the charge for the award with the support of principal teacher Amy Dunnett. It was Amy who submitted the application for the award, which required seven criteria to be satisfied before it could be given out. The conditions included devising an action plan and an environmental statement, pushing cooperation with the community and linking the environmental work of the school into the way pupils learn. Aberdeen City Council's Educational Operational Delivery Convener John Wheeler said, This is a fantastic achievement by the pupils, staff and the entire Orchard Bray community. We said from the outset that Orchard Bray would be more than a school, that it would act as a community hub. This award certainly bears that out and I would like to congratulate everyone. 
Anne-Marie Robb, Education and Learning Coordinator at Keep Scotland Beautiful, said, Eco Schools is the largest sustainable education programme in the world, engaging approximately 20 million young people in 67 countries. We're proud that Scotland is world-leading in its diversity in delivery of the programme. And our success nationally is due to the individual endeavours of those schools like Orchard Bray who put in so much hard work to achieve their awards. A Northeast mum who beat cancer as a child is set to pull on her running shoes in honour of her late grandmother. Lauren Gill developed a tumour between her spine and her skull after contract granular fever at the age of 13 and underwent a year of gruelling treatment including chemotherapy. Now age 30, the Cooter mum is aiming to make husband Stuart and nine-year-old daughter Emily proud by taking on the London Marathon. She will be running for cancer support charity Macmillan in memory of her grandmother, Kathleen Dempster, who passed away last year at the age of 76. She said, When I was ill, my mum and dad had to stop work to look after me, and you don't realise how much organisations like Macmillan help in that situation until you're going through it yourself. It was so hard for my mum and dad, but Macmillan helped him so much, and I want other people to be able to get support as well. I'm very grateful for the fact I'm still here. Macmillan are even closer to me now because my nana passed away last year. They helped look after her from the very start. They were there the day before she passed away, and it was such a comfort to us as a family. To know my nana was being looked after was so good as well. It's very, very difficult trying to look after someone who just wants to be at home, but really shouldn't be. The nurses in the hospital have all the other patients to look after, so it can be very difficult for them. The Macmillan nurses came to the house and really made her feel special. They put my nana to bed the night before she died and she was still smiling. When they left her, she was happy and that is so important to us. Lauren, a keen runner, is aiming to raise at least £2,500 through her marathon attempt. However, she also organised a fundraising afternoon tea at Cooter Mills Club last weekend and has almost reached her goal raising £2,100. She is now hoping to do her nana's memory proud when she joins more than 40,000 other runners for the marathon on April 28. Lauren, who works in accounting at Subsea, added, I do a fair bit of running, so I decided to use that to raise as much money as I can. You want to give something back when they've done so much for you, because that sort of thing is more personal. As well as herself and her nana, Lauren is also determined to do her bit for others battling the disease. I'm just determined to do my best and raise as much money as I possibly can. Our other article today is not taken from the Evening Express but is a very important one. Author and lecturer Leo Busgaglia once spoke about a contest he was asked to judge. Its purpose was to find the most caring child. Here is an uplifting story. A woman in New York stood and watched a little barefooted ten-year-old boy, very cold and shivering, staring into this busy shoe store window. The incident took place beside a very busy roadway. She approached the young lad and asked why he was in such deep thought staring into this window. His reply was, I am asking God to please grant me a pair of shoes. She took the youngster, led him by the hand into the shop and asked the assistant to supply them with six pairs of socks for the lad. She then explained her findings to the assistant and politely requested a basin of hot water and a towel. The assistant was eager to help and was very quick to fulfil her wish. To avoid stares from others, the back room was made available to the lady and the bewildered young boy. 
There she washed the ten-year-old's very cold feet and, with a gentle touch, dried them with a towel. By this time, the helpful assistant had returned with six pairs of socks for the boy, matching her early request. After placing one pair upon the lad's feet, she then purchased a pair of shoes and gave them to the boy. Before leaving, she patted the child on the head and said, in a quiet, calming tone, No doubt you will find some comfort now. Her kindness completed, the lady turned and began to walk away. Within seconds, this baffled youngster had caught up with her. He grabbed hold of her hand, and as she turned, she witnessed the boy's tear-filled eyes flowing uncontrollably down his face. He had only one question for the kind-hearted Samaritan. Good lady, are you God's wife? Now, we have a scripture text today taken from John's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brian, for that. And I was thinking about that, well, more like that last story that you read out, uh, the Samaritan, and it just shows that you can have good-hearted Samaritans, a people who actually care enough and do that. Uh -huh. And then it just reflects what acts of kindness like that can actually do. It certainly lifted the boy. Very, very much so. But I think anyone who reads that, well, mm -hmm. anyone who hears that, will be really chuffed and lifted it, up. It takes just one person to do something special That's right. for another. And we're all capable of doing it. We are all capable, yes. question is, do we? Will we? When the chips are down, will we actually do that? That's an important question, yes. And it's so difficult to pass people sometimes on the street because half the time you're thinking, are they just deliberately doing that to get money so that they can buy drugs? Or are they really in need like that boy was? Are they genuine? Yes. Are they genuine? Uh -huh. And then it's all too easy to shut out the needy people. And the only prayer I can come up with is, Lord, show us those who are truly needy so that we can help them and help us to have the wisdom and the strength to do this and not to be duped by those who are just pretending. That's a very good way of doing it, yes. Right, excellent. And now, uh, there's the other one that to, to mention particularly, and that's uh, the lady who went through cancer but has now come out the other side, uh, the mum and uh, Lauren Gill, who has now decided to not only do an afternoon tea, raising virtually all of her target amount, but is now going to run in the London Marathon, is doing this in aid of Macmillan Nurses because of what they have done for her gran. She's doing that in return for what has already been received by her, but uh, she wants to go way beyond that and helping so many other people to benefit as she has. She knows the benefit that Macmillan were for her and her family and she wants other people to have the same benefit. And I think this really lifts Macmillan up a great deal and will encourage many, many people to contribute further. I'm impressed with that story very much so. Yeah. And of course, you wouldn't be putting in any of these stories, Brian, if they hadn't touched you in some way. And hopefully, they would touch our listeners and we would love it. Exactly. Listeners, as they listen to this, where there's a podcast, through podcast.g4g.org.uk, or indeed, a direct broadcast as it goes out live on Friday between 4pm and 5pm on Saturday and Sunday from 12 and during the week as well as uh, the Community Best programmes. 
We'd love you to get in touch with us and you can do that by sending an email through to info, that's info at g4g.org.uk. Well, what to brought this one about the uh, Uwili Project Trailblazer to your attention, the first one. Here uh, were many people wanting to create a proper community because I know, I mean, here in Aberdeen we have many different nationalities, many different languages and that. So I can see the problem that is being faced by the school and because every one of us, you know, we, we need to try and get a community spirit around and it's not always easy but this will give an attraction to the whole community there and they will be able to join in and feel part of it, feel part of each other. They can take ownership. Yes, joint ownership. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very, very important. So that struck me very much when I read that one for a start and it became uh, a must record. Mm -hmm. Because not all the good news is great news. This is. I was very, very impressed with that. Yeah. That's imp important, having a community uh, situation like that one. And then there's the uh, green flag. The North East School has been awarded a green flag for the Orchard Brace School. Excellent. Well, here's a school that uh, it's, it's not just an ordinary school. It's uh, designed to help a lot of people who have maybe extra special needs. Mm -hmm. And it sets up to really achieve that. And this award, because of all that they have done, proves that they have achieved and have the attitude to continue to achieve mm -hmm. their aims uh, of helping other people. Again, there's this community element, uh, which is very, very important, that's very much involved here. And there's a photo in the paper, obviously, in that, and uh, you can see the joy on the faces of these pupils, where uh, that they have received this yes. recognition, you know, and they will continue to live for the community. But, I mean, that it has to be said about a, a school that gets going even from scratch and then fosters in the children such a great sense of community. Correct. And they, they are encouraged gently to, to work towards this. Yeah. And as they're shown love and made to be valued, they do work towards it. Of course. I think it's a... It's another brilliant story, actually, mm -hmm. you know. That's another one I could not have missed, you know. Definitely. Well, Brian, can I thank you very much for all your good news stories, including the last one, which we started discussing uh, now. Could I get you to read out the scripture, please? Yes, indeed. From John chapter 4, verse 14, which says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Excellent, Brian. Thank you very much. And we'll Thank see you. you back again, uh, maybe probably back at the studio uh, at the same time next week. We'll look forward to that. Excellent. And Brian will indeed be back at the same time next week. Right, we are back in the studio and uh, if you were hearing background sounds and you just uh, tuned in partway through that, uh, I was uh, talking to Brian. Brian uh, is one of our volunteers who does the good news and we were recording this at uh, the Cafe for a Credo, which is in John Street in Aberdeen. Now, during the programme, uh, Brian actually mentioned uh, the great work done by the Macmillan Nurses and uh, Macmillan Cancer Support. So macmillan.org.uk is the website. And if you want to find out more about that uh, great work, then you can go to that website, macmillan.org.uk. And uh, it's really 
or an almost all-encompassing, I would say, website giving information about the different types of cancer, how to understand it, uh, the processes of diagnosing, organising, treating and helping and coping and resources. And there's also uh, an online community section to that website as well. Uh, and uh, there's also ways that you can actually log in and, and uh, get, should we say, more tailor-made help as well as my Macmillan. All that from that website, and it really, I suppose, just takes uh, one visit to the website, macmillan.org.uk. Or indeed, if you're needing to talk about, which you may be a family uh, member who is trying to get a little bit of help and a little bit of understanding and as to what's gone on, perhaps a, a really bad diagnosis. And uh, if you're needing to talk, I'll give you this number and then I'll give it to you again, as indeed the website again at the end of this, 0808. 808-0000, and that's uh, seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can call free. So I'll give the uh, information at the end, and I'll try and make sure that's available from our website as well. Now, information and support. If you know someone who has been diagnosed with cancer, uh, McMullen can help. So to find out what to expect, getting information, practical advice, support, and hearing from experts and other people's experiencing and there's various links uh, to the various things that I've, I've mentioned. And uh, there's a question, for example, what is cancer? There are 200 different types of cancer. Each type has its own name and its own treatment. And of course, most people I've come across refer to it seems to be as the big C. Um, and some people even give them names as well. Uh, but whatever your coping mechanism, uh, there is actual help out there. Now, uh, let's uh, go. Uh, the, if you've had, for example, a bad diagnosis, uh, there is actual help and articles and activities relevant. Uh, for example, you might say, I've just been diagnosed, I'm having treatment, I've finished treatment, uh, um, or I know someone who is older who's got uh, cancer, or I, I know someone who's a teen or a young adult, uh, or someone who's a child. Um, I'm looking after someone with cancer, uh, and uh, and also with the cancer, for example, pregnancy as well. So there's all this uh, available to you. And then there's also a section in the green bar up along the top saying in your area. So whereabouts are you? You can type in your place or postcode. So if I type in A, B, 11, 9, LX, which is uh, in the postcode where we are uh, as the radio station. Uh, they found, for example, seven things available in this area. There's uh, pink people, people in need of kindness, uh, as services provided, uh, for example, befriending, bereavement, support, cancer, information, materials, home visiting, and hospital. Uh, there's also Grampian McMillan Cancer Support. Uh, Centre Project, uh, uh, Aberdeen Citizens Advice Bureau, uh, Aberdeen Hematology Support Group, Maggie's Aberdeen, uh, Macmillan, uh, uh, the Peter Head Citizens Advice Bureau, uh, there's Move More in Aberdeenshire, Bam Buchan Citizens Advice Bureau, uh, and that's uh, all within, well, fairly close, certainly Aberdeen uh, City and Aberdeenshire, and uh, whatever your postcode, you can type that in and you'll find information about what there is in your local area and then then go along to that. Now, I did say that uh, I would uh, read out the uh, telephone number once again so that uh, uh, people can get help if they need to. And... Uh, if there's anyone listening from Macmillan today, uh, if I've forgotten anything or you'd like to let us know about anything for a future program, then do please get in contact with us and you can send us an email through to info, that's I-N-F-O, at g4g.org.uk and uh, we'll be pleased to include that for a future program. But in the meanwhile, if you need to talk to anyone from Macmillan, it's 0808 808 Zero 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 zero, and that line is open seven days a week, eight a.m. to eight p.m. And calls are free, and they should hopefully be free from mobiles as well as from landlines. 
And the website is macmillan.org.uk and uh, they will be able to give you all the advice uh, that you need and uh, put you in touch with people who have either been through uh, cancer or um, people who can just help you through the entire process. So that's our uh, second community element. Our third community element is we're thinking about transport. Uh, and uh, right at the start of the programme, we uh, Many of the courier drivers and the lorry drivers uh, going up and down the motorways, they spend long hours behind the wheel. Uh, they don't really get much recognition uh, or kindness from people. Um, it's great that you know, they do actually have a little bit of support, hopefully from service stations uh, as they go up and down. But uh, there aren't many people who do always come alongside them. And uh, just to recognise them uh, on this show, but... Uh, also to let you know that there are people out there and these people do give help in a, a non-judgmental way and some of these uh, people included as uh, ongloryroad.com that's a website that is available uh, so what we do is uh, go to that one and uh, we'll give you that information that you can contact them uh, they will go, for example, along to truck shows. Uh, they often uh, pull up at uh, service stations and will come alongside drivers and just talk to them, just provide even a listening ear to drivers. Uh, and that's what they do. Uh, and so let's uh, go on, on to ongloryroad.com and I'll give you some details with that. Uh, there's also details, for example, uh, from Truck Plus and also Transport for Christ in other uh, areas of the world as well. Now for Glory Road Ministries, it's info at ongloryroad.com. That's info at ongloryroad.com. And there's a 24-hour uh, helpline, which is a mobile number, 0777 302 5383. That's 0777-302-5383. And it's just a case of uh, leave a message and uh, then they'll be available uh, to give help and they'll be able to ring you back. Now, the person who set this up and the person who runs the helpline is Keith Creighton and he does a great job. There's also links on ongloryroad.com to Truck Plus, which is a truck ministry in the Netherlands. And there's also Transport for Christ as well. Uh, and these are links directly uh, from the On Glory Road uh, website. So you can find out more about these and these good people will come alongside and give uh, opportunities uh, to come alongside lorry drivers uh, uh, and courier drivers so that, and indeed all drivers around the world uh, who are doing a great job, we take them so much for granted. And I believe that just at this point, uh, it's not always something we do on uh, a Community Elements show, but uh, really just to show uh, the power of prayer more than anything else. We are a gospel radio station. Uh, we have Christ Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. And uh, if we didn't communicate with uh, Christ in prayer, well, this is just to uh, demonstrate that prayer really does work. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, just want to raise up uh, all the different things that we talked about on the program today. Uh, and we give you thanks, Lord, for all the good news. We give you thanks, Lord, for the great work done by Macmillan nurses. We want to raise up uh, those who have uh, been suffering uh, from cancer or the families affected by those suffering with, with cancer. We pray, Lord, that in all cases, you'll give them peace of mind and heart, uh, that you'll provide healing, Lord God, uh, provide comfort, uh, and uh, that they would be uh, a blessing and a comfort to others when they're going through uh, this situation. Thank you, Lord, for Lauren Gill, who's uh, going to be running in the London Marathon and doing great work. And now, Lord God, we come to the great work done by uh, those in the transport industry to uh, take our goods and services uh, across to us. So we give you thanks, Lord, for them to remember 
the lorry drivers, the courier drivers, the coach drivers, also the train drivers and guards and, and staff involved with the railways and the airports. We give you thanks, Lord, for them too, for their families. And we just leave them in your hands and pray, Lord God, that you'll be with them through the great work that they do. We pray, Lord, for the work of On Glory Road Ministries, Transport for Christ, and the great work done in the Netherlands. And pray, Lord, that you uh, will expand and greatly expand their work and help them to come alongside the people who are really serving as well. Thank you, Lord. Amen. This is the uh, Community Elements show, and uh, this show goes out uh, once again on Saturday and Sunday at uh, 12 p.m. midday, and also as uh, individual Community Elements on the Community uh, Best shows as well during the week. Uh, you also get to hear this on as a podcast uh, following this show. Just to let you know, this evening we have... Uh, more prayer and uh, this program is called Power Hour and it's about applying God's word in prayer. The theme is make space, make time, or should that be make time, make space. Really just coming away from the barrage of information that we get to us each day and it's so difficult sometimes to switch off from it and this type of barrage of information often causes such uh, stress and all sorts of other things. But we do need to come away from that. And uh, so this will just be a, a prayerful, thoughtful uh, program, uh, really with prayer at its heart and God's word at its heart, demonstrating once again that prayer really does work. Gospel for Grampian, and uh, we will be certainly back with you with another set of uh, good news stories and another set of community elements.